Some curse words are worse than others, and viewers should note that in this video, we'll use many of them. But in the hierarchy of swearing, there's one word that takes the prize of being the absolute worst. What makes the C word so terrible? In English, we have these two words, and one is prick and one is cunt. This is Robin Lakoff, Professor Emeritus of Linguistics at University of California, Berkeley, and an expert in gendered language. Prick refers to the male organ, literally, and cunt is exactly parallel for the female. And because these words refer to analogous things, you'd think they'd be used in the same contexts. But they aren't. In fact, prick isn't even always an insult. You can use it under some conditions as a compliment. Oh, that clever prick, you know, like that. But cunt is something entirely different. Cunt, you know, I, I sort of sticks in my throat a little when I try to say it. It's the last worst word around. Samantha B learned this the hard way when she called Ivanka Trump a feckless cunt. All hell broke loose. It's outrageous. Incredibly offensive. Has comedy gone too far? Samantha B list. Unacceptable. Now, you could call her father a prick. People wouldn't think it was polite, but nothing bad would happen. She used that word of the first daughter. She was lucky, I think, that she kept her job. So why is the slang term for a woman's sexual anatomy so much worse than its male equivalent? The answer might lie in depictions of female sexuality throughout history. You look at mythology, and a large number of the terrible things that happen in myth and religion are imputed to bad behavior on the part of women. There's Helen of Troy, who runs off with Menelaus and causes the Trojan War. The goddess Circe, who transforms Odysseus's men into beasts. And of course, it's Eve's temptation of Adam that gets them both kicked out of paradise forever. Again, it's the sexuality of a woman that's the frightening thing about her for men. But the idea of dangerous female sexuality goes deeper than just curse words. The very notion of female, of woman, is inherently sexual in a way that the notion of male or man isn't. This is Deborah Tannen, a best-selling author and professor of linguistics at Georgetown University. Words that are associated with women take on overtones of sexuality in our culture. For example, consider the words sir and madam. They should be parallel, and yet somehow a madam is a woman who who runs a house of prostitution. Or master of the house versus mistress of the house. It's no surprise that the word mistress has evolved and taken on those sexual overtones just by association with women. Even when we try to insult men, women get caught in the crossfire. Consider the words bastard and son of a bitch. Those are good ones. Both are words addressed to men, but to call a man a bastard or son of a bitch is to say his mother was promiscuous or sexually uncontrollable, which means it's actually hard in English to insult a man in a way that doesn't insult a woman. This has terrifying real-world implications. It's so easy to dismiss talk about language. Get that son of a bitch off the field. It's frivolous. It's just words. He ought to get the hell out. Words don't matter. She took a little short circuit in the brain. Let's talk about real things. Let's talk about actions. Grab him by the pussy. We could never overestimate the power of words. It's the use of words that reinforces the assumptions and the expectations that lead people to act in a certain way. And in the case of society's attitudes towards women. We're coming face to face with the really disappointing, sad phenomenon that attitudes toward women are inherently negative. But since language is constantly evolving, maybe there's room for change. If we change the words, we can start changing the attitudes and the expectations. Now, on the one hand, language encourages inequality because it gives us the forms to be unequal with. But on the other hand, language is perhaps our one hope of getting over it. 